what's up? How you doing? Good. Um, your voice sounds a lot more innocent than I expected. Um, yeah, I mean, de- depending on <laughs> depending on what you've heard about me, I can be a much different person. Um, I, there's lots of different uh, prevailing narratives about who I am. So yeah. Um, yeah, I, I expected you to be like, hey, I'm here to decimate you, and I'm like, oh gosh. Not only What's sometimes. Up? No, I'm in a good mood. I've been playing a lot of video games. I'm uh, good. Okay. I'm right now. I'm just setting up your camera. Um, how are you doing today? Pretty good. It's been rainy and cold, but you know, we persist. True. I'm Man, the one. Man. Um, I guess I live in. I live down in California now, and I have for two years. So I'm like completely spoiled by the weather. I used to live in Nebraska, though, which was more similar to Georgia, um, where y- you you'll, you'll do the thing where you guys will have the temperature will be like 80 degrees. And it'll be beautiful. And then the sun will drop, and in about 30 minutes, it's like 45 or 50 outside. It's crazy. <laughs> the the swing okay, well, in like was, an hour. I was, I was stationed in a shithole part of California, and the weather, I mean, it was nice most of the time, but in the winter, it got pretty shitty. Yeah. I guess um, it depends on how far south I, or north you are, depending on, yeah. Lemoore? Are you familiar with Lemoore, California? Is that really far north? By hand? Um central okay no i don't well i'm in la so everything north of la is really far north of me so yes um what were were you uh military if you don't mind saying yes navy um i was stationed at nas lamour that's between fresno and visalia gotcha okay so who who is watching your stream because i know nothing about your world so like this is like new to me yeah, I mean, I imagine, are you familiar with, like, YouTube? Um, You know, if there's a direct link to YouTube, but I don't, like, subscribe to anyone, and, you know, someone sends me a YouTube link, I might watch it. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, so, so basically... Not well, it'll go on YouTube eventually, but basically, um, I'd say, like, Twitch is like... Uh, it's kind of like YouTube, where people go to the website to um, to watch videos, except on Twitch, it's live. So that's basically what it is. Um, okay. And then different people watch Twitch for a variety of reasons. I'd say the main draw to uh, Twitch is going to be um, like video game related content. And then okay. um, politics and music and other stuff is on the side popular as well. Um, just depending on who okay. you are and what you've done. And yeah, so people know me kind of 50 54. I used to be more heavily into gaming. And then now I do gaming slash politics. And I'm probably. Um, more known for uh politics now yeah oh Mm -hmm. interesting yeah who did you support in the primary um (laughs) wow we're really starting off with the heavy questions huh um i was actually a huge i was a huge bloomberg fan no um so honestly through the primary i never had like a huge like i'm massively in favor of this person um there is a little bit that i liked about every candidate Um, and there's a little bit that I didn't, well, most of them. And then there's a little bit that I didn't like about every candidate. Um, so for instance, Steyer, even though he was a billionaire, I really liked his obsession with climate change. I think it's really important. I respected that about him. Um, Pete Buttigieg, very young, has had some problems. I respected his pragmatic approach to things. Um, Bernie Sanders, I like how far left he wanted to run on some economic issues. I thought that was respectable. Um, Elizabeth Warren trying to marry like the pragmatism with Bernie's more left-leaning stuff I thought was really respectable. Um, Amy Klobuchar's record in the Senate is really amazing. Um, she's got a, a crazy track record. That was respe- like um, Biden is as serving as like kind of the chief moderate with the eight years of experience under Obama and then everything legislatively he's been involved in. Yeah, there, there's like a little bit of everybody. I didn't have a strong horse in the race. I actually didn't vote in the primary. I wasn't like super allegiant to any person because um, whoever came out, I knew I'd be voting for them in the election. So, yeah. Wow, that was a huge non-answer. Huge <laughs> non-answer. Well, okay. <laughs> the... You, oh man, it's a hard question. Honest to God, at the end of the day, if I if you would have if you'd a hell of a gun in my hand, you would have made me support somebody. It probably it sounds dumb saying it now, but I was thinking back then it probably would have been Biden because I thought he had the highest chance of winning the general election. So on on that's not dumb at all. Okay, on that on that ground, I am very pragmatic when it comes to my political positions. Um, I, I think that Biden probably has the ability to get the most done. So I would support him on those grounds. Followed maybe fair, by fair. yeah, followed maybe by maybe by Warren. I think maybe yeah, and I'm not just saying that because okay, I like sweater, you a so. little more now. <laughs> yeah, um, 
Yeah, but I think I see. I've, I've gone through your Twitter a little bit, and I said it seems like you were a really big Warren supporter, or still are a Warren supporter. So, um, well, just curious, I guess, to, to kind of start this off to, to get a more uh, uh, more familiar with your politics. Why Warren, I guess, over anybody else? Um, this is gonna sound silly, right? Mm-hmm. But I went into the primary uh, backing um, P. Okay. <laughs> and and um. I just felt that, uh, you know, I, I'm in a military area. You know, um, you were here in Columbus, Fort Benning, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of veterans issues. And I felt like someone needed to address all these broken people coming back from these forever wars and that a civilian wouldn't understand. So and plus, you know, he's uh, openly gay that that spoke and young. Mm hmm. But uh, what really changed it for me was She the People. Um, that was put on by black women. Um, and they were asking questions to all the candidates that affected us in our community. And um, I think Elizabeth Warren, she wasn't even on my radar. But it, what she said really spoke to me. Um, and she seemed to have an understanding about uh, systemic inequality especially racial ones. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard a white candidate be so candid and blunt about it. So like my heart just went with her. I cried when I heard her speak. And I think I joined a whole bunch of before this, right? Everyone keeps thinking I'm some expert or really um, experienced. But before Elizabeth Warren, I had never volunteered. Mm -hmm. And, um, I joined a whole bunch of online groups and um, donated, and they invited me to come to Atlanta from Columbus for a Warren weekend to train me as a volunteer leader, and that's where it all started. So, yeah, that was a long answer, wasn't it? Gotcha. Um, no, I mean, that's fine. Did you—I'm um, I'm just asking. I'm never trying to lead you. I'm just curious. Did you ever consider Tulsi Gabbard as, like, a military-esque person, or— <laughs> Okay, that, like, tells me everything. <laughs> Um, wait, why not? I'm, I'm so curious. And like, it's funny because like in my world, when we look at like candidates, um, like man, people online, I don't know how much you know about how much people are nerds when it comes to like, oh, well, we looked at like the HR resolution, blah, 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 blah. Like this is why people argue. Um, but like you, sometimes in the real world, you know, somebody will be like, you know, I saw them say this thing and I'm never voting for that person. Or I saw this thing and I don't like this particular thing. Um, so th- there's like a huge gap between the world of like online Twitter politics versus what people that actually go out and vote think. So yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm so curious. I want to ask you for your political opinion. I'm kind of curious um, from like an outsider's perspective on, or I assume you don't spend all your time online banning politics um yeah how you view somebody like (laughs) tulsi gabbard yeah um she never said anything that moved me Mm -hmm. i mean there was nothing there was no position that she was on that would motivate me to get out of bed like when it's pouring down rain outside and it's cold is you know all get out and um to go do work for her money because you know like as a volunteer you spend a lot of money um and there is nothing about her that would inspire me to waste my time, energy, neurotransmitters, whatever it may be, you know, mm-hmm. to, to do work for her. And, and most of the candidates out there are the same, you know, um, uh, Hickenlooper. I couldn't imagine, like, going out and, and doing anything for him. But, uh, you know, and, and um, when her stances or her, her views on LGBT uh, issues came out, I was just like kind of cringe and now it's coming back out and it's just like, yeah, I can see why I never supported you, Mm -hmm. but she just never inspired me. And I think, um, for volunteers, people who will go out and go out of their comfort zone. I mean, those, your candidate kind of has to inspire you Mm -hmm. to do that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I can understand that. Um, in terms of, so you, okay. So to back up a little bit, I guess, um, I'm talking to you because, um, obviously, you noticed uh, some of my uh, little people running around knocking on doors, which we all saw the videos. I thought it was really cute. Um, everybody in my community really liked it. Um, and yeah, that, that, that interaction was cool. Um, I, when, when you Did reached you out, ever get to speak to that guy? Yeah, he was one of the, um, yeah, he came back. We all, at the end of the day, well, we had two ships. We did, um, I think it was like an 11 to 3 and then like a 3.30 to 5 or something. Um, and we met back up in the middle of the day and at the end and we were all kind of talking and everything, yeah. 
Um, what do you think about, uh, I just, I have so many like general questions about um, canvassing and you can always like chime sure. in if you have a question um, or some input on something. Um, I mentioned a few of these in my email. Um, I've heard a lot of mixed things on how people feel about out of state support for candidates. So whether that's out of state money supporting a candidate or whether that's people like driving in or busing in from out of state to do campaigning for people. What do you feel like, what's your personal opinion on that? And then what do you feel like the general opinions are of people in a state about stuff like that? Okay, so the loudest voices are generally um, online armchair, you know, political quarterbacks who tell, who who try to take a sound bite and say, "See, Stacey Abrams said for you to stay the f out of Georgia," and that's not what organizations are saying. They're saying, "Don't be rogue," and come in in an orderly manner, you know, because you don't want like ten different groups and. Um, you know, like with the 503 uh, C's, they can't coordinate with the Democratic Party. So they're going to be doing a thing and the Democratic Party is going to be doing something. We just don't want chaos here. Mm -hmm. So it's like go with an established group and, um, you know, follow their lead. And I've had to fight on Twitter because everyone's like, well, you know, Stevens group went in there, you know, all willing. I'm like, no, they didn't. They had connections with a group on the ground who's part of the coordinated campaign, what you're saying is false. Mm -hmm. So as long as you come in and follow the lead of organizations that are already here, it's not a problem. We love it. Um, you know, door knocking is the gold standard of volunteering. It's the gold standard, like better than text banking, better than phone banking, better than sending postcards. So if people, I mean, there are, like specific groups or parts of the Democratic Party that cater to people coming in from out of state to knock doors. So, you know, for everyone who thinks that, no, you need to stay out of Georgia and whatever, um, as long as you're doing it in an orderly manner with, um, you know, working with people on the ground, established groups, it's so very welcome. Mm -hmm. And I think it's amazing. I, I saw your guy out there and I'm like, oh, I didn't know who he was. I thought there's a 50 50 chance he's canvassing for Purdue and Leffler. Yeah. So I was like, hey, you know, who are you um, canvassing for? And I was just so glad that people from outside are coming in to do this. It's 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 awesome. Mm -hmm. OK, cool. Um, on that on that kind of note of like the gold standard for, um, you know, what people can do with their time. Um, if if there was somebody hypothetical, well, so if somebody like me exists and they want to try to like aim productive resources at a, a particular um, electorate or a particular area to try to like push a certain candidate, like what do you think are some like effective ways to do that? Or like what are the best places to send those types of resources? Um, I think like if you are able to mobilize, like right now in this time, the Senate seats are the very, the most important, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, if you have people nationwide that are following your lead, like, tell them that the local level is where it's at. Like, everyone's talking about defund the police, and, like, AOC is not going to get it done. Um, Ilhan or anyone else is not going to get it done. Your mayor and city council is going to get it done. So, like, look into your own backyard and... And, you know, you might even have smart guys that could run for city council, you know, run for something. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's always looking to do the, these big national things when when all politics is local, you know, and people don't realize that. And, you know, it took me working from Warren to down ballot candidates to finally saying, hey, if I want police reform, I've got to put pressure on my city council and my mayor, you know, because AOC is not going to affect what's going on in Columbus, Georgia. And that's where the big things can happen immediately and effectively, like, change your life. And it's not glamorous. It's not fun. But, I mean, how many people do you know um, know who sits on their city council? And they're the ones making budget decisions for the city you live in. So, like, that, no one's doing that, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I'm guessing you're very influential. And 
you can have your um, people. Are, what are they called? The the GGs. The we I, we don't I mean, have like an official name. We get called a lot of things. Okay, so. but <laughs> yeah. like your folks can mm-hmm. be like occupying, you know, like local levels of government. There's so many seats that go uncontested, mm-hmm. in, like by Republicans, that like it, it's it's amazing how much people can transform things on a local level and it cascades the state level and you could see this state has medicare for all and it's good yeah. you know but people want instantaneous national policy changes and generally that doesn't happen in politics yeah this is something that has taken me an unfortunate amount of time to learn um i just i didn't really realize i, I guess especially doing like online political commentary like all of the sexy stuff is happening at the national level, like the Senate and the House, and this is what Congress is going to do, um, and this is what everybody is so fixated on, and our turnouts for these elections sometimes can even get pretty high, 60 70%, 80% in some counties for this election. And when we talk about things like police reform, I mean, the police budgets, I think like 60 to 70% of the, the police budgets come from the state, or actually it might even be more local than that. It might even be more local yeah. than the state, like municipal level stuff. Um, this isn't all federally funded. And the federal government can't really do that much for like the individual right. policies. Yeah, this stuff is set at the at the, the level of like the mayor, right? And the mayor is the one choosing the chief of police. Right. So when I see that like we get all these hype, or all this hype is around here for these national level elections, and you know, well, your chief of police comes from the mayor, and 20% of people will turn out to vote for that, and and you better believe that that 20% of people are not a cross-sectional representation of society. It's a very particular segment of society that's voting on it. Um, yeah, getting people kind of like more woke on those local elections is so difficult to do. And then it's doubly frustrating because all of these people will run around saying things like, oh, you know, we're not going to vote. We're not going to waste our time voting. Voting doesn't work. And it's like, I mean, you haven't tried it yet. <laughs> like, if, if, yeah, if you had 80% turnout for a local election, like politicians, regardless of what you think about a politician at the end of the day, whether they're evil corrupt whatever all they want to do at the end of the day is get reelected. and if you're not voting they're not going right. to cater to you yeah and also um you know uh like i said you know like if you if you're talking about national level stuff i mean all they're going to do is like fine we the feds won't give you tanks to your um mm-hmm. police department you know that's that's the level of change that federal defund can do right mm-hmm. like Less military grade stuff goes to local police offices. Um, but if you're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, school boards and, and, you know, infrastructure within your city, that is like local level issues. And, you know, it's not sexy. It's not. Mm-hmm. And like I said, um, a lot of these seats are like the Republicans knew the value of doing this. Yeah. And we're playing catch up from decades of Republicans seating all these county and city level, you know, offices and knowing the value of it. Mm-hmm. And to, to, to us, you know, leftists, progressives, whatever, we still don't see the value of, hey, you know, we need, if, if there's a garbage collector uh, election, we need to elect the Democratic uh, garbage collector, dog catcher, school board, everything. We need to vote on everything and let us run our people Mm -hmm. and this will go to your people like donating over four thousand dollars to my uh local dems thank you very much everyone that was amazing that's like almost half of what we have in the bank um and we go out and we try to find people to run for these uncontested offices like on a county level and we're the last people to get seated you know, the DNC, they might give some to the state Democratic Party. But when you get down to like county level de- Democratic Party, the money really like it's like trickle down economics. Mm-hmm. And we're the ones looking and training candidates, you know. So if one of your guys is like, hey, I'll run for something. It's a county or city Democratic um, person that's going to help them, give them resources and, you know, things to run for this office. So people are really not giving love and neglecting their local, you know, party politics. And this is probably why we've lost so much power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then it's frustrating because everybody will blame, uh, you know, like federal level. Uh, So 
I, I fight a lot against, I do a lot of fighting online. <laughs> so like common talking points will be things like, oh, well, you know, we had Obama for eight years and he didn't fix anything. And it's like, well, the president can only do so much, you know, especially with a gridlock Congress. And even with the Congress is working, like, a, you know, a president can only enact so much change. Like you're not going to see everything change. He's not a king. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been very difficult fighting against that wave of, um, of, not disenfranchisement, but where, where people just feel like demotivated about the electoral process because all everybody focuses on is the federal level stuff. That's been like a really frustrating process, um, I, I guess, to talk to people about. Although thankfully now the Republicans are starting to experience it on their side because a lot of the Trump fans are telling the rest of the Republicans, the election's rigged, don't vote, this is you know horrible. And it's like, oh, cool. Well, I guess that helps us. So, yeah. I don't believe that um, because we do get complacent sometimes mm-hmm. as Democrats. And then, like, look what happened with Trump. I mean, everyone said Hillary had it in the bag. Yeah. And, you know, um, the Republicans showed up and voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. Uh, Everyone was saying how we were going to win by, you know, huge, huge, you know, margins. But the Republicans did show up and vote for Trump in bigger numbers this election than 2016. Mm -hmm. So I would never ever get complacent yeah like, of course you yeah know, you don't want to count on them that, not showing up yeah right they're saying that you know the the republicans aren't going to show up for the runoff i wouldn't put that in the bank sure yeah of course yeah it's still <laughs> everything is even right now in georgia i think both warnock um, and ossoff are polling pretty solidly ahead uh, but yeah i mean as we saw in this last election nothing really played out exactly as we hoped it would so uh, yeah you have to fight till the end on these things of course can I ask you a question? Yeah, you can ask me whatever you want. Question. Yeah, no, go for it. What um, what's the feedback that um, your canvassers got from canvassing? Because uh, I'm gonna be honest, the the people you recruited are not the typical demographic of people who canvass. So I wonder what their reception and um, feedback from the doors they got. Honestly, I think most of the reception was really positive. Um, in talking to most people, um, very co- so it, all, most people had one story of a person that was like, I don't want to tell you my vote. Um, and then some people had, you know, stories of like people clearly not wanting to come to the door or ignoring you because they think you're a salesman or, you know, whatever. But I think everybody had at least one or two stories of like, oh, you know, this person saw me come to the door and they were a little bit teary. You know, they talked about how they voted in every election. They're definitely going to be there. Um, and, I, you know, I knocked um, I knocked doors both days as well because I wanted experience doing it. And that, that seemed to align with my experience as well. I was um, pretty surprised because personally, I don't know if it's a millennial thing um, and I just don't interact with people. You know, if somebody knocks on my door. If I don't know who it is. I'm ignoring you. Um, and I just thought it was really cool that like I knocked on a lot of doors and people were like genuinely excited. Like, um, like, yeah, I'm voting for Warnock. I'm voting for Ossoff. Of course, I'm going to be out there. I've already voted. You know, I'm going on uh, early voting day and, you know, I'm going to be down there. Um, and most people seem to be like pretty, pretty receptive to, you know, um, if they actually open the door, they're pretty receptive to voting and saying if they voted and all of that. So, yeah. I'm glad. Mm-hmm. It's just that um, we just don't get like, at least in my area, involvement by super young people as much so i was just wondering what their experience was Mm -hmm. and i'm glad to hear it oh i noticed that is true actually because um one so we're we're two we're we make two big asks when we canvas so one is if people would like to have a sign in their yard for free that shows their support for um we were working with ossoff's group so it was for ossoff um especially because he's the one that needs a little bit more help right now um and then the second one is to try to find if people want to volunteer um and that second one was hard because i noticed on a lot of the doors we were knocking it like I want to say the median age must have been like 60, 65, maybe seven years old. There were a lot of people on my minivan app that were like 86, 84. And I was like, wow. Yeah. So definitely an and older you know, population. I, yeah. And I would like counter like the people who said you were coming in on unauthorized. Um, you wouldn't have a list number for minivan if you just came on your own. I mean, can you imagine like where would you even get a list number? If, if you were just some dude that showed up and was like, I'm going to knock doors on my own. Yeah, so, like, I want to, 
a lot of times people get excited about doing a certain thing. It's possible to just like overload on excitement and come in and kind of like actually hamper whatever it is you're trying to get involved in. So I was trying to make sure that we were doing it like relatively organized. Um, I don't want to show up and, and, you know, second or third knock on a bunch of doors that have already been visited. So I wanted to make sure that we had some sort of um, some sort of connection to the official campaign so that we were working off of list for doors that hadn't been knocked yet. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful that I think it was a group called Humanity Forward, which is part of the math movement of Yang's campaign that has a connection to the Ossoff campaign. And they were the ones that were getting lists provided to them that we were knocking. So, yeah. Yeah, I um, canvassed with them, um, I believe, the previous weekend. Mm -hmm. So I met them. Darian, Ray, um, I, I met them. Awesome. Yeah, okay, yeah, Darian was like a, a huge, yeah, very tall, um, very cool dude. Um, younger guy, Julian, a lot of, um, I think, Delia or... I don't. I can't pronounce the name correctly ever. But um, yeah, yeah, super, super, super cool group of people. Really fun to work with them. I'm really glad. Nothing that we done would have worked without those people being there. Um, they were like the backbone to making sure the infrastructure was in place for our people to go out and work. So yeah, really, really cool people. Mm -hmm. Funny story. Um, I was spending and wasting my time on Twitter defending them when they came because uh -huh. they were like, we don't, we don't want Yang in Georgia. And I'm like, are you in Georgia? And they're like, no. But Stacy said, I'm like. They're part of the coordinated campaign. Are you, I mean, online Twitter is like political Twitter is wild. You know? Oh, they, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. I'm like, I am in Georgia. I'm an organizer, and I welcome these Yang people here. Mm -hmm. I am an organizer. I welcome the Destiny people here. I mean, and you are somewhere else, and you don't do anything, but, you know, you're really loud on Twitter. Mm -hmm. real loud yeah so. it's been very frustrating again i don't know how plugged in you are to those movements but there's um there's, there's this big train of thought that basically everything that isn't far left enough is just going to become like a a fascist um and so the idea is that if you settle for somebody like ossoff or if you settle for somebody like warnock like these aren't guys that are coming out with bernie's medicare for all plans and everything like these guys are basically fascist so we're not going to support them it's better to just lose the congress and then we'll come back in four years when people realize the mistakes they've made and we nominate all bernie sanders candidates um is is the the running line of thought which um is very 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 frustrating yeah so i guess we're just going to be neoliberal shills right wall street neoliberal shields i've been called that yeah basically that's what every single mm -hmm. insulin I, I want kids in cages and i hate poor people mm -hmm. yeah and <laughs> that's, and that's and one of the one of the big frustrating parts for me about that is that like that's a really fun position to have when you are so unbelievably isolated from all of the world's problems like i can sit here and play the game of I only want Medicare for all or nothing because you know what? If I get sick, I got money. I can go to the hospital. I don't really care. But that is such an incredibly selfish position to take for somebody that only has insurance because of the ACA existed. And to tell people like that, well, sorry, you're just going to have to suffer for four years. And then hopefully next election, maybe we'll get somebody elected. Um, it's such an incredibly frustrating position to deal with when there are so many like very middle class very white, very suburban people on Twitter that have their ideologically pure thing and nothing else matters beyond that. It's such an incredibly frustrating position to do it, especially when you're looking at a place like Georgia. No offense, but you know, Georgia is not the most progressive place around, you know? And the fact that we're even having the conversation right now of possibly winning two Senate seats in Georgia, that's amazing. That's probably not going to happen with two people that are like coming out of favor of the Green New Deal. You know, it's probably not going to work that way. Um, yeah. And I mean... Um you know, I, I'm pretty sure I can share this, but during the primary, I kind of, um, you know, was backing Ossoff because he almost won his congressional seat mm -hmm. in that um, when he ran for Congress mm -hmm. uh, as a representative. And um, he's kind of cute. So I was like, I'm backing Ossoff. And um, I met him when he came to Columbus. And I was like, um, so do you support Medicare for all? And he was basically like, well, no, you know, if it came across my desk, I would veto it. And, you know, um, it won't work. I mean, no country in the world has it. Even the UK doesn't have it. And, you know, um, no. Mm -hmm. And he was like, basically, like, go talk to Ted Terry. He he, he believes in that. Mm -hmm. And so, like, during the primary, I shifted my support from Ossoff to uh, Sarah Riggs of Amico because mm -hmm. she was like, I want whatever works for Georgians. Yeah. But, you know, now looking back, it's Ossoff's position that was more popular here in Georgia. So 
there's no way we're pushing Medicare for all when we didn't even get Medicaid expansion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which a lot of states I mean, voted it's down. Not realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So But and I think yeah. some people um it's frustrating because a lot of people a lot of people are all or nothing on everything. Like there is no incrementalism when most historically, like a lot of US stuff has happened in incredibly incremental steps. Like it's very rare that like one thing happens and now everybody <laughs> completely comes around. Like it doesn't usually work that way. Um, and, and, and there are a lot of people that are helped by the incremental steps along the way. Like the only reason right now, whether people want to admit it or not, the only reason right now why we're even talking about Medicare for all is because Obama got the ACA passed. Um, now the ACA has a ton of problems. I am never going to come out and say the ACA is a great thing. It helped. It was so good. Like ton of problems, obviously. Healthcare is still really expensive. But because the ACA passed, now we can even have the conversation about Medicare for all, you know? And if the next step happens to be a public option or even like expanded, you know, Medicare or expanded Medicaid, like, I think that's okay. That's fine, you know? Yeah. And I mean, like, you can't, like, the theme over and over when I canvass <clears throat> in, um, in the primaries, and I knocked a shit ton of doors. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's a, there's a, a, a term that the uh, Warren campaign came up for me, which is knock star, because I knocked more doors nationally for um, Elizabeth Warren than anyone else. Okay. So, like, I talked to a lot of voters, mm-hmm. and um, I mean, to them, and especially black voters, because I tend to stay in black areas because there's there's the uh, like kind of cultural yeah, I, we get each other. Like, if I go to white neighborhoods, I have to, like, you know, combat, why is there a black person in our neighborhood? And, you know, sometimes it's not just, it's, it's just not productive. So talking to black voters, they think that Medicare for all sounds great, but to them, it's pie in the sky stuff. Like, they are more pragmatic. Like, well, what has passed and, and who has passed this legislation? And so they didn't, they thought Elizabeth Warren and Bernie's plans sounded great on paper, but they were like, we're going to go with Biden because like, you know, he was with Obama when they passed Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like it's, it's a hard sell when it doesn't exist yet Mm -hmm. and it's not working. So like once again, you know, if these, like D plus 30 areas can get Medicare for all for their area and, and can show the rest of us how it's great. Then non-progressive, like you said, areas like Georgia might be like, well, I kind of want what the Bronx has, Mm -hmm. you know, but Georgia is not going to be leading the charge on these things. Yeah. This, this has also been something, um, Man, dude, when you talk about politics online, the only level you look at is national. And I've been totally guilty of this for a long time. It's only in the past like year and a half have I actually started to understand that like really, really in the United States, no issue is national. All of it comes down to a state by state and sometimes even more, uh, um, more granular of a level. Um, and, and something that has been frustrating me so much is that there will be so much criticism. I love AOC. I think she's grown a lot as a person and I really appreciate like the, how, how much these people can stake themselves out on the left. I think that's cool in the way that it pushes the party, but I get very frustrated when people who are sitting in democratic districts that are like plus 40 or plus 60 are calling out moderate Dems. And it's like, why aren't you guys talking about defund the police? Why aren't you guys? And it's like, man, even black people in the United States are majorly in favor of having the police. Like these are really yes. radical. Not everybody yes. can afford to have these. Yeah, yes. which was a huge frustrating position of a lot of the more moderate seats that were lost um, in, in the past election. And a lot of people have been complaining about that messaging that like, well, hold on. I don't know if it's fair that people in plus 50 districts are dictating the national level messaging of the yes. entire Democratic Party. Yeah. I mean, I've talked to Southern black voters and they hate it. And I have to be like, don't worry, Warnock does not support defund the police. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, they're getting brutalized by the police. But at the same time, when gun violence happens in, you know, the hood, they want someone to be able to call. And, you know, defund kind of sounds like we're getting rid of the police, you know, and, and nobody's really trying to hear that right now. Mm-hmm. And um, it's incumbent to these uh Uh, abolitionist groups or whatever to come and educate people because as you know as boots on the ground knocking doors we don't have time to sit there and have a 20-minute conversation about what defund the police 
really looks like. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it and shouldn't be. Your slogan sucks. If I and this even happens on the funniest thing that will happen online. Okay, let me t- let me break down like what a thread will look like. Okay, so somebody will come in and somebody will say. Defund the police is a really important slogan in the U.S. And someone will come in and they'll say, defund the police sucks is a slogan. You don't even know what it means. You guys have no definition for it. And someone will respond like, well, actually, no. We do know what defund the police means. Defund the police means that we want to reallocate resources to other departments. But then 10 people respond to that. Well, hold on. No, I believe in defunding the police. But I mean, I think we need to remove all funding from the police. Or someone will come and be like, well, hold on. I think we should defund the police. But I mean, we should just need to cut the budget completely, even if we don't really. And, and people argue amongst themselves for what defund the police means. It's like, oh, my God. And Republicans, of course, are going to run it with the most extreme definition. Yes. of this yeah and it's oh my god the the and and most people that are even supporting defund the police it doesn't even make sense in a lot of the ways because in some ways you want to increase like for instance for people that are talking about we need body cams and we need more training for police officers okay well that's going to take more money you know like that's not going to be a defund the police situation um it was yeah it's a very very frustrating slogan um and then on top of that with all the images of the the protests and everything and it was just it was such a great line for the republicans to fear monger on it was very 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 frustrating to deal with for a lot of the more moderate seats that we lost in this election yeah and, and it makes me like like be on the team of people like Joe Manchin. And I don't really care about a Joe Manchin, Mm -hmm. but when he's like, shut the fuck up and stay out of my state, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. 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 It's frustrating. Um, how in your, from your perspective, so I live online completely. It's where my whole existence is. How much do you think the online political narratives like bleed over into like real life, people like are people are, are, are you know like as a 60 year old person that lives in Columbus aware of the online discourse do they know what people are talking no. about there or what yeah how does that no not at all mm-hmm. like the things that um concern people online generally is like online circle jerking mm-hmm. you know um like even people like my dad who watches like at least three or four MSNBC shows Mm -hmm. don't care about a lot of things that you know are strictly online Mm -hmm. and you know i like to look at it because you know i use twitter a lot for organizing fundraising and seeing you know what people are talking about and other organizers are doing so i see it going on Mm -hmm. and i'm like nobody at the doors or nobody on the phones or texts care about this Mm -hmm. at all like, this is just pie in the sky. You know, we have the time and energy to ponder the lofty premise. So here we are. They don't realize that most people, they go to work, take care of their kids, mow their lawn, and, you know, watch some TV shows and go to bed and do it all over again the next day. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they're not that involved or want to even think about it it's not a thing that they want to be a part of yeah and you know people outside that bubble don't realize that yeah for sure you know um do you remember elizabeth warren had all these plans and her online fans would be like yes a new plan drop organizers are like oh my god this is another plan i have to memorize Mm -hmm. but none of the voters cared about any of the plans yeah you know they're like you know, so there's a huge disconnect. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you at the doors, you didn't get complicated questions about legislation or or someone's policy position. Ever. I mean, never. You're never practice. discussing policy with a voter. Yeah. Because people generally have like if there is a policy, it'll be like one broad thing. Like I need like coronavirus relief or I want health care. Uh, yeah. It's not going to be like, you know, how much money was promised to HBCUs in the in the part of the platinum plan. But like it's very rarely will it ever get that nuance with anybody, even if they even if the issues do like individually um, affect them. It seems like people are way broader than that. Yeah. But when you spend like all of your time right. online, it's, it's generally like hardcore into these like policy debates that like average voters just don't really care about. Yeah. Right. And this is what um like, I guess, intimidates people from volunteering. They think they need to be policy experts. And it's like, no, you're asking basic questions. Like, even in the primary, it's like, who are you supporting? Mm -hmm. What issues are important to you? You know, um, general stuff. No one ever asks, well, what is, um, you know, uh, your candidate's position on Green New Deal and how will they, you know, fund these new green jobs when coal is taken away? Nobody asks that. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. So, you know, 
people don't realize that all you have to do to volunteer is just have a good attitude and 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 be enthusiastic and you could be like um you know what and, and the campaigns encourage this you could go to their website and and do this i'm just a volunteer and i don't know the specifics mm -hmm. that's a acceptable answer so for um for people that are looking to i, I guess become more involved um you said that this is your like these last few years i guess have been your first time being involved with like on the ground stuff um, yes, but you know, it accelerated so much mm -hmm. and so fast and I worked up the leadership chain so quickly, I guess, mm -hmm. that people think that like we're coming to her to ask questions and I'm like realize that August next year will be my second year of volunteering. Mm -hmm. Um so like yeah, I'm like take what I say with a grain of salt. I've just done it a lot because I'm self employed and have the time to do so. Mm -hmm. So what's your question about getting people involved? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I guess I didn't finish. For, um, for people that want to get involved, what do you think is like the best place for them to start? They read a lot about it online. That's all they know about it so far. Like, what, yeah, where does this person go to get started with this stuff? Um, one place that I can recommend, it's a, it, they run a tight ship. They give um, great training, a working families party. Um, I, I became like leadership in the text program, but you know, I, I switched my, um, my, uh, focus to local. Mm -hmm. That's a great place to get trained and, you know, um, get a, a myriad of experiences. Also go to your local Dems. I mean, you have, you know, um, a democratic party, that's your local chapter, go to them, help them out, see what they're up to, you know, just like the Muskogee County Dems here. We would love to see new people, um, and there's just a lot you can do from volunteering to running for something, you know. Um, and every, it's always the scary. The first step is always the scariest, but like trust and believe. We want you. We want your energy. Um, please come say hi to the local Dems or working families parties, or if you find a candidate that that resonates with you. You can go to their website, and they always have a um, volunteer now mm -hmm. uh, button where you could get involved, and it's a relatively easy process because of COVID, and a lot of things went virtual for, like, the first several months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things have gotten really easy to kind of get in, you know, or, like, tag me on Twitter, and I'll help you. Something that I'm really curious about for when it comes to canvassing, have you ever done the type of canvassing where you're canvassing on like enemy doors where you go to like Republican houses and try to like talk to anybody? Or is it generally just turning out like, yeah, Democratic ones? I'm really curious on that. So like organizers tend to not want to throw you to the wolves. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So like the voting databases we have, we try to pick Democrats. However, um, if someone um, who's Republican voted for a Democrat before or wanted to play around in the primaries and, and try to vote for the weaker candidate in the primaries or something, they end up in our universe. Mm -hmm. and, or if they were curious about a candidate, you know how like with Warren, it was 24477. You could type fight to 24477. They might have done something like that to opt themselves in. Sure. So we do get GOP doors at times. Mm -hmm. um, and you tread carefully. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, because you're there representing someone else. Mm -hmm. So while they're spewing whatever it is that they're spewing, and a lot of times it's, um, I hate Mexicans, yeah. and they're taking all of our jobs and ruining our culture or whatever, now, I mean, as a black person, I know that racism doesn't work where they hate Mexicans but love black people. So I'm thinking, okay, I need to, like, find a safe way to disengage and, and leave. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Let me note that down and let my candidate know. Uh -huh. And, you know, you want to make it as pleasant and don't escalate as possible. You just mark that person as GOP. Um, that takes them out of our universe so the next person doesn't go knock their door. Mm -hmm. But we do encounter that once in a while. Um, most of the time since it's face-to-face, -face, they're not as odious as they might be on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But I think I've that... Never, um... 
That's like I've a, had only one person chase me down the street, mm-hmm. and that was an older white lady who hated Democrats, and she like was running down the street, but she was like seventy, so like I could outrun her. Oh sure. But for the most part, people are they will voice their discontent, mm-hmm. but they try to do it pleasantly because they see that you're in their face, like yeah, and you had the balls to come knock their door. Yeah, something that a lot of people don't realize um, is the more personal interaction becomes, the harder it becomes to be really nasty to somebody. Um, in my world, so like on video games online, you can either type words at people or you can use a microphone and talk at people. And people will be way more rude to you in text than they will be if they have to actually talk in voice. And then much the same, people will be very mean to you in voice sometimes, but in person, they probably wouldn't say the same thing. Um, and again, that's something that I, I really want to reiterate to anybody listening. Um, I don't know. I don't know if any person reported a very nasty encounter. Um, there was one guy that showed up at the park where we like met up at at three thirty, who I think was a Loeffler supporter. I, I could tell from the way that he was asking questions, um, and it was like minorly confrontational, where he was like asking a few like pretty pointed questions or whatever but like even at that that was fine nothing bad came of that or nothing happened but i don't think that there was um i don't think there, i don't remember there being a single like somebody showed up the door and they started screaming at me and you know i had to run away and i was very shaken i don't think that happened at all and we knocked about two thousand doors so it's like a decent sample size like nothing not a single person had that experience so yeah and, and for the most part you know when organizers um cut these turfs mm-hmm. they don't try to include GOP. I mean, you know, you don't want to send your people out to the wolves because people are like, I'm not doing this anymore. I mean, yeah. my life is in danger. Mm-hmm. So um, getting a GOP door is the exception and not the rule. And for the most part, they act right. And I, I just, act, you know, apologize. And I'm like, would you like us to remove you from the database? And they're like, yeah, that would be great. And I'll be like, I'd be glad to. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your insights. I hope you have a great day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. End of, you know, end of interaction. Because once again, you remember that you're representing someone else and it's not you. It's you're representing a campaign. Mm-hmm. So that helps. Yeah, for sure. Um, For this particular election season, have you seen, I guess it's harder because you're relatively new, but does it seem like there's a lot more interest on the ground compared to other people you've talked to or from other people you've talked to in getting more involved locally for this election cycle than there has been in the past? Um, I think, so, you know, I've been involved in the presidential and then down ballot, Mm -hmm. you know, because my candidate dropped out. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that, Um, For the people that I do encounter, they're very excited about um, the runoffs. Mm -hmm. But um, like you're knocking doors for the candidates. I've been I've been um, knocking doors to cure ballots. So it's a whole different, you know, set of uh, people. It's longer. So I don't get to talk to as many voters. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fix people's registrations. So I don't think I have a good of a pulse as like someone who's knocking for the candidates because I'm doing voter protection side now instead of, you know, GOTV. When you say that you're like at doors curing ballots, um, are you do you have like an iPad or something? Are you able to do that like on the spot for people when you're like looking stuff up or? Um, Hold on. Let me uh, pause real quick to yell at my dog. Yeah, no problem. Sure thing. Okay, sorry about that. You're good. Um, actually, uh, we have um, we have to use uh, like the Secretary of State's website. We don't have any unique insight. Mm-hmm. We could try to help them out and see if we could figure out what's wrong, or we we can call three way to the uh, uh, Board of Registrars and see if like they can tell us what is missing or what is wrong because it might be. Um, a mail-in ballot that the signatures don't match or the address doesn't match, their name is spelt wrong, whatever's wrong with their registration, we uh, try to find a cure Mm -hmm. to, like, make it whole so their vote counts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of these these cures were in the weekend where we couldn't call, so, you know, I would tell them there's something wrong, 
and if they needed a walkthrough on Monday, I would help them. Mm -hmm. But what makes me sad is these people voted in the, in the general and their votes didn't count. Yeah. You know, I mean, they like with all the voter suppression that goes on in Georgia, like they took the time out to vote and like for it to not count. Like, I really want to help them make it count in the in the runoff. Yeah. And that... um, <clears throat> I think your uh, your political guy was um, saying that he was going to see if, you know, any of your people wanted to get trained up and cure votes, you know, cure ballots, because mm -hmm. that's a pretty important thing. And I'm like, yay, because I think I'm the only one in the county doing this right now. Mm hmm. My, so I so, guess more specifically, so my question is like, will you'll stand there at the door and like help them call and everything? Is it like a pretty? If they want to, mm -hmm. yes. Like the older voters, but the younger ones, I have a, um, a lit specific for that and they'll look at it and they'll be like, oh, I could do this on my free time. I got it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, thank you. You know, but when older people are like, I don't know what you're talking about, then I help them. Sure. You know, but mm -hmm. for the most part, people are like, I'm in a rush. I don't want to cure it right now. Can you leave the literature? And I'm like, sure, here's the literature. And, and I'll highlight the number they need to call. But they can pretty much do it on their own online. You know, they don't even have to go in anywhere. Uh, our um, elections office actually will accept emails with picture of your driver's license. You mm -hmm. don't even have to go in, you know, so. They're pretty generous with that. And, you know, the younger people and a lot of young people, their registration's been, uh, messed up so far. They're like, yeah, I got this. I'll correct it. I'm like, all right, good. Gotcha. So. Do, um, when, when you said that like, you're like the only one doing voter curing, so are you like part of a group of people that does it or is this literally like your personal mission is to? <laughs> no, I, um, it, this is part of voter protection. There's different aspects of voter protection. Some. Mm -hmm. Uh, man the voter protection hotline some people do curing through phone or texting um, I'm the only person in my county who's going door to door uh, curing ballots gotcha. and this is actually pre curing ballots because after uh, January 5th the election uh, Georgia law gives us three days to cure like ballots that have been rejected. Mm -hmm. So we want to do it on the front end so we don't have as many on the back end because we only have three days to do it. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. Um, that's more than you wanted to know, right? Well, no. I mean, that's um, I, I, I've heard a lot about Georgia suppression, and that's um, one of the points that we're supposed to bring up when we go to the door is, um, hey, uh, check your voter registration because sometimes the rolls, um, the, the voter rolls can get purged. Um, and then also you want to make sure that your ballots haven't been thrown out because the signatures don't match because I think that's I think that's supposed to be a really big thing in Georgia for how a lot of votes will get tossed. It's because people look at the signatures and be like, eh, these, and then they just toss a ballot out of it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, the, the voter... Um Sorry, my dog lowered my seat. Um, so, so the purge was not really accurate. There was that like lady who got on there saying all these uh, votes on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. And that created a lot of extra work for organizers because that's not really accurate. Yeah. Um. Uh. A lot of um. So a lot of the input for MVP, which is my voter page. Mm -hmm. It's behind. It just hasn't been inputted. So if these people did call their uh, BOR, um, they would find that, yes, they have a valid registration. Um, it just hasn't been updated in the database because it took low priority with the recounts and this and that. Like, they're behind. Mm -hmm. So the only, you know, so we, we talk amongst the voter protection people. The only way that it's an issue is if they were you know, showing up in MVP uh, for the general and all of a sudden they don't see themselves and most people didn't check. So all of a sudden they're, they're going there and they don't see themselves. They don't realize that they were never inputted in that portion of it. But if they called their, um, you know, elections office, they'd be like, yeah, you're here. Gotcha. So it's human error, but not like some malicious purge that happened. Gotcha. And that okay. was very dangerous because now all these people are like, you know, panicking and and we have to go to our commu 
communities and like explain and calm things down. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a purge. This purge happened in like 2019 or before. Like there has been no recent purge. It's they're just be kind. Gotcha. Okay. So, Interesting. Okay. Gotcha. But um, you know, I mean, that lady's TikTok video did a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. For sure. It's because people are thinking they're purged. Yeah. So. Um, I'm trying to think if I have hmm, any other questions, um, or if you have any other input or questions, or. I do have a question. Yeah, go for it. So, how was it? Um, how is it that the the party mechanism hasn't been able to mobilize the demographic that you mobilized but you were able to do it i mean what did you what did you say or re uh uh do or 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 whatever to get them convinced that hey i should go out and knock doors because that is a hard ask yeah it is um honestly a lot of it just comes down to um I think there's two things at work is that one, my content is very political. It's one of the biggest reasons why I'm, I'm known on the internet is for political related comment or content. And then two is because it's uh, in a way, um, this might sound a little bad, but it's kind of like a quasi like little like celebrity meet and greet. So you have the opportunity to see me and get a picture or whatever and like work with me and like interact with me in real life. And I think those two things kind of coming together are probably the, the reasons why I can make that ask. So something similarly, like I'm willing to bet I don't know this. No, nah, I would bet this. If somebody like AOC, for instance, were to go down to a state and say like, hey, I'm going to be part of this group and we're going to knock on doors. If you want to come volunteer with us, do it. Like that person could get a lot of people to show up because they want to see AOC and then they'll get involved in the process. And then from that interaction, some number of people will stick with it, you know, hope forever for years or whatever after that, after they pick it up. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so how did you make the ask? Just am I ask? Am I being too intrusive? No, you, you. Have, there's so much information about me online. You could never be too intrusive. Trust me. Um, the so basically what happened. Um, Okay, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. So I do a lot of online politics over the past four to five years. I would say that my job is generally, I would classify it as political hobbyism. Um, like it's kind of a game. It's kind of fun for me. I make money doing it. And that's to the extent that's all the political power that I really wield. Um, I mean, I feel passionately about the issues, but at the end of the day, I don't really have any political power. Maybe people vote because of things that I say, but you know, that's it. I talk about, I'm like a pundit basically online. And when I watched all the votes roll in for this most recent election, um, it was really cool how people were so bought in to all the different votes tallying in, in the counties, especially as the especially as the mail in ballots started to come in. Um, and you started to see all of these people um, point to like, oh, my God, you know, um, I'm, you know, I was in Fulton County in Georgia, and when I saw that county start to flip, like I felt like that was like partly me, like, um, or the um, I forget the name of the county from Michigan, but when those votes started to roll in, like people felt like really motivated in that, um, and I thought it would be really cool to have some sort of like impact even if it was really small but a small but measurable impact oh wayne county yeah uh, having a small but measurable impact in some of these areas and you know i you know i scream about politics online all day and i do all of this i think it'd be cool to see how many people i could get to show up to actually do some real political work and not just screaming into the void on twitter or on youtube or whatever so i arranged a little meetup in georgia to see how many fans would show up to see if they were interested in it and when i did it i got 150 people that showed up to kind of like talk about it the first day and then past that I've just tried to capture that momentum and get it a little bit more organized so we can go out and do like real work. So like door knocking and stuff. So yeah, that's basically been the story of how we've been involved there. And then the goal would be long term is that if I if if I feel like it's something that I could put some effort into and get good results out of. So like if I could show up in any state and reliably get like 50 to 80 people willing to show up every weekend to knock on doors, um, I feel like I could have a measurable impact on local elections. So on my platform, I've interviewed a few people sometimes that are running for like a, like a state house. Um, or for like a city council position or whatever. And I, there was this lady that I talked to in um, Florida. I think it was in the Tampa era, uh, Tampa Bay, I, I think. I don't remember which city it was exactly. I should remember this. But um, she decided to run on the last like day I think she registered because she wanted to challenge the incumbent for the state house seat. And she got really close. It was within 10 points. And she was a nobody. She, she man, I think she raised like $10,000 or whatever. It was like Jessica Harrington, yeah. Very low money. Uh, but I thought that was like really cool. Like there's so much political power out there for grabs, but nobody ever goes after it. We just prefer to like scream at each other on Twitter instead. So if I could like find 
people like that that I could throw my support behind, that would just be so cool. That if I could say that like, hey, in Wyoming and in Arizona and in like um, in like Maine, there were three state house seats. And I think that my community was measurably responsible for getting like an election result here where these elections are decided by like, you know, like if, if in one weekend we knocked on 2000 doors in Georgia, a lot of these state elections are decided by like three or 400 votes, you know, like that could literally, yeah. So that would be like the dream. That'd be the coolest thing in the world. I think to like translate like the screaming at people online on YouTube videos into like, what are some real political impacts that we get off on the ground? That would be so cool to me, I think. So, um, are you going to mobilize your people to, um, you know, door knocking is hard, and mm-hmm. if you're not local, you can't do it. Mm-hmm. But there's also phone banking, text banking, and um, your people are pretty good at fundraising. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've thought about it. Um, I, right. So the goal is to, whenever I'm doing like a new venture, I usually start simple, so I can see what works and what doesn't without compounding it too much. Um, because obviously, you start you need a lot more infrastructure in place when we start to get into things like phone banking, and then fundraising gets a little bit weird. If I want to do it for political reasons, I have to be careful to make sure that I'm doing everything appropriately as far as taxes go. Um, but yeah, I mean, like if the organizing on the ground thing works really well, and if that becomes like an effective thing, um, then having some sort of infrastructure in place for phone banking would be cool. Um, at that point, I have to start to ask questions of like. Does it really make sense for me to have this as part of my community or should I be like latching onto another community and feeding them people at that point and working alongside them? Or should I be more like an offshoot of some other group because they already have the infrastructure in place and I can just plug my people in? Um, yeah, those are questions down the road for sure. But um, I mean, <clears throat> you don't think it's a valuable thing um, because you have the community to maybe um, because the Democratic Party, like even mm-hmm. on the state level, they have the the Veterans Caucus, the the disabled caucus, the this caucus, there's so many of the gamer caucus. You wouldn't want to spearhead something like that. I mean, is there, is there enough community there and people who relate to it? Cause I don't know. I'm not part of that community, but do you think that there's a, a, a big enough population that would be active to, to warrant their own caucus or their own, um, 503 C non, you know, like, uh, Nonprofit. I mean, like, I think they're, or do you want them to merge into traditional, like, um, traditional mechanisms, or do you want to, like, kind of keep your own identity? I think there definitely could be room for that. Um, I try not to think past too many crossroads, or because this is really far down the line. Um, but yes. by the time I would hit that point, there would be so many things that I would have to think about. Um, I am a very white person that has played internet games for the past 20 years. I have said a lot of crazy fucking shit online. Um, I'm sure you've been sent. Yeah, a little bit of it. You you don't even know the, you don't even know the tip of the iceberg of the crazy stupid shit that I've said. Um, So my main worry would be that like. um, But I always mm -hmm. counter with, we have a governor in in Virginia that black people overwhelmingly support Mm -hmm. that made a hobby of black faces. Yeah, and then I kind of look at it and I'm like, well, Donald Trump, man, there were so many points in the election where it was like, oh, Donald Trump said grab him by the pussy, he's gone. There's no possible way. So yeah, I always think that as well. I, I The only thing I worry about is that like, when there's a lot of people in this industry that are very much like pariahs that are looking to build like social credit, social capital, financial wealth or whatever off of like the political stuff. And I'm very much not like that. I'm really here because this is like a passion project and I don't want anything to ever get bogged down in drama because my name is associated with it. Like I would feel incredibly sad if we got very far into something and then for the million millionth time like oh my god you know like he typed the n-word online in 2017 this whole organization needs to be shut down and now i've got like all these passionate people that are like behind me that are getting screwed because of dumb stuff that i've said you know um yeah i don't know that's just it's all like stuff the Mm -hmm. people who give a shit seem to not do the work right yeah that seems to be the case yeah if if you sit at home and you're like well i'm not a racist i only say nigger you know every six hours and i limit myself to that yeah i've got a i've got to weigh it against okay is he trying to legislate this or you know is he actively trying to harm my community or is he being stupid mm-hmm. and what what net benefit does he have i mean if you've noticed black voters and and the black constituents black organizers we're very pragmatic mm-hmm. very pragmatic um 
And, you know, I think you're going to get more pushback on this. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. Um, more white people online are mad at me for shouting you out than mm -hmm. black people. Yeah, that's something um, I read a really interesting article a while ago about how I think it was on Slate about how um, I think black voters in the U.S. are like the most strategic group of voters that exist in terms of how the vote works. Um, and a lot of the purity testing and everything seems to come from white people online when it comes to that stuff um, for whatever reason. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It's, it's so all your, your mm -hmm. enemy is is your your the people who are going to give you the hardest time, probably white people. Yeah, because black people are going to be like, well, he's deploying his people to get Warnock elected. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, uh, um, you know, my pragmatic side tells me this is a good thing because no one's out here trying to be your best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to see you as a political person. What can you do? Unfortunately, that's, that's how the shit works, right? Yeah. What benefit are you to a group of people? And, um, for online people, they're going to see you as fodder for, like, making shitty, hot political takes. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, the people on the ground that I've talked to about, like, you know, what you do and stuff, we're just like, yeah, white people say stupid shit. Sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, even Jenna Marples came out with an apology video. Oh, yeah. Right? I remember, yeah. Like, so, like, you know, it's not surprising. It's like, but what are you doing today? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's. So. I mean, obviously, that's a really refreshing view. It, it'd be cool if that's how it worked, but um, online we just we keep pictures of each other and things we've said from five years ago, and that's usually what we all end up fighting over all day. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all stuff that I'll consider down the road. If this project works out really successfully, I think it would be a shame not to replicate it in some areas. And then, if I am able to replicate it with my fan base, there's a conversation we had there about replicating it with other online fan bases, and then with enough people, like you can make a not a small but measurable impact, but like an maybe be like a substantial impact in local level elections and yeah that would be a really cool conversation to have are you acting coy or are you not realizing like your impact and how amazing that you take like scared like young guys who stay inside all the time and got them knocking doors i mean are you just like downplaying it because you don't want to see like you know you you're big-headed or do you actually not realize like the party mechanism could not do this. No, I I, I try to, I, I have to be really humble online. Yeah, I have to be really, I've made a lot of mistakes, okay? I have to be really humble online. I do think it's a really amazing thing. Um, I think I even said as much in your email, like I was really, really happy to see you saying positive things about my people. Um, I don't I, I don't know if you realize it's, I think you've gotten a taste of it. The online communities related to politics are some of the worst and most toxic and least effective communities that exist in the world. So a lot of what I've done the past year has been trying to get people more interested in real life politics politics, not like would Marx approve of this candidate or just this crazy stuff that people are talking about now. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I am very, very, very personally happy with it. Um, I have to, to stay humble and stay grounded, of course, um, especially when I've got like the, like, you know, like the DSA chapter in Atlanta saying I'm a Nazi and stuff. Like, I, I have to try to like, you know, walk through so many different worlds at once and maintain, you know, a demeanor that keeps me grounded in all these worlds. But yeah, per personally, I am very, very happy um, that I can get people to show up and do stuff. I think it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, people I talk to, like, you know, um, like political comms people like in DC, they think that what you did was amazing. It's like, God damn, the party can't even do this. I mean, you know, they have the young Dems and they eh, sometimes, but he got these like geeky nerdy people to go knock doors. Like mm -hmm. that's unheard of. Like, you know, I mean, some people are like, how come the party's not kissing his ass? And I get it. You've got a checkered past and people are afraid, but I'm just like, that is so valuable. You know, to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, awesome. You've, you've got my like total like amazement and like wow. Like I wish I could mobilize young people like you did. Um, but I'm not connected to that. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes the Democrats think that they fucking know everything, but they don't because they didn't get the demographic that you got. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Something, um, this is going way back in the conversation, just on, on what you just said, I'm kind of curious. Um, a talking point that I hear a lot from, from the left and the right, and then from conservative black people um, especially, um, do you ever feel like there's a sentiment among parts of black America where they feel like the Democrats are owed their vote and don't have to work for it? Do you think that's like a rising sentiment? 
I think that the younger generation feels like that. Mm -hmm. um, the but then again, the younger generation isn't as um, tied to and um, it's not part of their social like fabric like it is for older people mm -hmm. that went through civil rights and, and then the generation right after that. But um, like my, my dad's generation, he's in the 70s. He's in his 70s. He couldn't imagine voting for anything other than Democrat, mm -hmm. you know, and it could be the shittiest Democrat unless this Democrat is a child molester or something like, you know, Roy Moore, mm -hmm. like they're going to vote straight Democratic ticket. It's it's in the late um, the younger like millennials and younger that question it and is like, what are you doing for me as a party? Mm -hmm. But older black people like. No, they, they swung for Joe because they're like, we're traditional, middle of the ground Democrats. And and it's it's like unsaid in churches. It's 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 not to be questioned with them, you know? Gotcha. So I think it's a new thing that's happening where they're like, Well, I think I'm gonna be a democratic socialist or I'll be green. Like if you pick, you know, black folks forty and above, say, like it's like, what are you talking about? You know, mm -hmm. we're Democrats through. So, like, you're probably dealing with younger black people who are more amenable to, like, being communist or socialist or something other than a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, just curious about that. That's something that is obviously brought up a lot. Um, all right. Um, man, I guess, uh, anything else? Um, I guess um, I'm going to meet Doug. Mm -hmm. um saturday mm -hmm. so i look forward to that because he said there there'd be beer and pizza <laughs> okay gotcha everyone comes for beer and pizza all right um that is true yeah that's one of our uh one of our luring mechanisms but um awesome. do you know how many of your people will be go be there and how many i would meet um, I'm not sure yet. I'm trying, uh, we're, we're, we're working so much on like how to communicate this. Cause we're obviously I'm taking like, a very small slice of my fan base and we've been working that my, my, my goal, I'm really, really, really hoping that I can get 50 people that want to do it for that weekend. That would be awesome if I could. Um, but yeah, that's where we're shooting high. We'll see, uh, what we got. I think right now we've got like 40 that confirmed. Is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. I look forward to it. And when are you coming back to canvas? Um, I'm any, if they're canvassing, I'm canvassing. So I'll be there in four days or whatever. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. So, um, the beer of my choice is wine or Stefaner. Will, will there be some, or will you just have Coors Light? Oh no, we'll have anything you want as long as you're willing to pay for it. So <laughs> wait, hey, we're oh, not wow. taking, I'm not taking donations for this. this is coming out of my pocket. All right. Calm down. My, my canvassers <laughs> okay, don't so get paid. I'm not I'll buying buy you, beer. you a beer. I'll buy you a beer. Nah, we'll, we'll listen. Whatever, I'll, you'll have at least one drink on me, okay? It's worth it for the uh, for the for all the really kind things you said. Everything that you say nice about me because of the way that fan bases work online, all the other people like hear it about themselves. So I really do appreciate the kind words because I'm it, very. It, you know what I said, I, I, I didn't understand because it was literally a few minutes after I talked to that guy. I went to my car to drink some water before I did the next street, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Hey, I mean, it was like a quick video, you know, quick mm -hmm. and dirty. I was sweaty in my car." I mean, I just didn't think it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I greatly appreciate it, and I know my whole community greatly appreciates it. So thanks a lot. It's been an awesome conversation. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I guess I look forward to seeing you on Saturday or Sunday, yeah? Likewise, likewise. Thanks. Cool. Um, I'll see talk ya. to you later. Yep, see you later. Bye. Wait. Bye. Did you? Wait, can you hear me? Oh, shoot. I wanted her to shout out something if she wanted to. Ah, I should have asked. Oh, rip. Oh, also, hey, if you were inspired by this conversation or if this kind of stuff is cool to you, um, I have a Discord for people to go out and canvas, the Destiny Canvassing Discord. If you are in Atlanta, uh, I'm sorry, not Atlanta, if you're in Georgia or if you can get to like Columbus, Georgia, um, we're doing this every weekend now. I've got a little canvassing form that you can fill out. And um, yeah, you should definitely join that Discord. Hold on. Invite people. Um, I'm I'm asking that like the only people that join this are people that actually want to come out and do it. Don't just um, don't just come out or join the Discord because you want to meme or whatever. But um, 
Wait, how do I invite people to a... I don't even know how to make a broad invite link to a Discord server. Is it only Saturday and Sunday? Well, yeah, we're doing it every weekend, um, kind of, sort of. Um, there is a... Uh, we've got, like, carpools and stuff as well. So um, if, you're, if you're, like, living in Atlanta and you don't think you can get to Columbus because you can't drive there, um, we've got, like, people working on, like, carpooling. I think we're trying to stick to, like, two to a car so that people aren't, like... Getting everybody sick and dying and shit, so. Yeah. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.